Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I've got something I'm really excited to look at tonight. Um, Dan Panosian, Urban Barbarian, Collected Works. I picked up this book from a, um, God, I think it was a Kickstarter, I believe is what it was. I'm sure it was. Um, that uh, And I've, I received this in the mail a couple weeks ago and I've wanted to do a video on it from the instant that I got it, but I kind of decided to hold off for a minute. Um, Dan Panosian, I know his name is what my first experience and exposure to him was early image comics in the nineties. Um, he, uh, I, I don't know what his first works actually were, but I know the first stuff that most of us probably think of him was doing profit for the extreme studios with Rob Liefeld and he was doing it. And I don't think that he was happy with that work and with the book. I think that he felt like he wasn't the right fit for it, or maybe Liefeld himself felt that he wasn't the right fit for it. So they replaced um, Dan Panosian with Stephen Platt, and that is when that book took off, because Stephen Platt was just this rocket ship to the stars. He was just taken off, and everyone was mad crazy for him. And Dan Panosian went off and did whatever else. I don't know. But um, his artwork back in the day was god-awful. So much so that when I see his name, sometimes my brain automatically defaults to what I used to think about him back in the day. I used to not like his artwork at all. And I, when I'd see his work, I was like, or I'd see his name or I'd see his work, I'm like, oh God, this guy, he's terrible. And to give you some kind of context, I am gonna show you some images here that I found so you can see what his work used to look like. This is some of his early work on the profit book. Now it's kind of perfectly serviceable for the era that it was done in. Um, I mean, it is what it is. It's like a, you know, a third rate Rob Liefeld knockoff, you know, drawn from comics as your only reference. You've never looked at human beings in your artwork. You've just, you're throwing all these lines in there. You don't really know what they are, why they are, what you're doing. You're just kind of doing whatever kind of comes naturally to you as a kid. And it's, I mean, it's okay, but I mean, it's also, it's not okay. It kind of sucks. It's just as, I mean, he had something. He certainly had artistic talent and skill, but if you look at this stuff, you know, that's him, Dan Panosian. That's him right here. Look at this. This is what he was. This is who he is now. I, I'm not saying he's the only one, but I struggle to think of any artist that has shown this much growth. He was just, like I said, a, a bad copy of Liefeld and, and was drawing in the same style as so many other guys from that extreme image comic studio style. So many guys drew the same way, but none of them grew to be the artist that he is now. And it is astonishing. Again, I'm not saying he's the only guy with that kind of growth, but I struggle to think of anybody um, that's shown that kind of change. And I started paying attention to his artwork a couple years ago. And one time I even mentioned to him, he was posting somewhere, I think it might've been Instagram. And I mentioned to him very briefly, I just commented that, man, I used to you know, look at your work back in the day and I don't mean to be rude. I said something to the effect of, but your stuff used to suck. It was so bad. And you are so insanely good now. And he kind of responded with, a, you know, thanks for letting me get past my growing phases and my growing stages. And, you know, he's like, thanks for checking out my current work. And so once I saw this was available, I had to get it. Like, look at that stuff that I was just showing you. And then look at this thing. And this book is just filled with a guy who has a complete and total understanding of how to draw and um, the art form and lighting and ink work and an anatomy and perspective and mood and everything that just falls in line with what an artist would want to be. I think he said that he had to stop drawing comics and go learn how to draw. I believe he said something to that effect somewhere. 
So he stopped and whatever he did, I don't know if he took classes, went to school, whatever, but he went off and learned to draw. And I'm going to say this a lot and I'll try not to keep repeating myself, but those images I just showed you versus this stuff. Look at this. Um, I believe he works largely, if not exclusively, in digital. And if you know what you're looking for, you can tell the digital, but there's also elements to it. I've said this before, if you follow any of my videos, um, I've mentioned once or twice, I think, that I don't like artwork that looks digital. When you can tell instantly, like, oh, there's the computer effect he added, or there's the background he threw on with a quick tap of a button or something like that. I don't like it. So if you do digital, but you're able to hide it so well that it looks like you're drawing by hand, I mean, that's what, I mean, I'm a little biased. I mean, like, look, I mean, look, my hand is covered in ink smudges because I just spent the last two or three hours drawing my own pages. Like I inked that tonight and I did this page here. And another page I got actually buried. I'm not going to unfold it. But I did three pages tonight, so my hand's covered in ink. And so um, I'm a little biased. I like it when you do buy things by hand. I'm not saying that's right. It doesn't matter. Who cares, right? But when it your artwork looks good enough that it could be either or, look at this. I don't, I don't even know what the hell that is. But that is so great. Um in this book, he's uh, listing, he just, he, it's Dan Pinoja himself talking about his artwork, his influences, talking about the individual drawings on some of the pages. It, um, it's really interesting to read. Like, look at this. The skill level involved to be able to draw this, that guy that I was showing you on that iPad with those digital images that I had saved, that guy could not draw this. He would not know where to begin the realistic lighting, the, the cartoony caricature, the, the ability to go really like rough and like implied detail. When you look at it up close, it's kind of sketchy and rough, but as a whole, it's flawless. It's perfect. He, uh, you know, like all those image artists would draw kind of the stereotypical hot woman's faces, but now it's... Still a beautiful woman's face, but it's done with the finesse of a guy who understands his artwork. Like, look at this natural, you know, the line work that he's got going on here. The coloring, I don't know that he colored these. I it just, just, It's got his name on here. Um, it's just got Panosian and Panosian. So I'm guessing, I'm just going to assume uh, that he did the coloring on them. And if so, then holy shit. But... It's so good. I mean, all these lines, I know I was saying this, but they look like very naturalistic ink lines done with a brush. And you can get these effects digitally if you know what you're doing, and boy, does he ever. This is interesting, showing a black and white image and the colored version. Great, great stuff. Um, this is one of my favorites. And I love the colored version, but I also love the black and white. I don't know which one I like more. They're both awesome. And again, like typical comic book fashion, it's a super sexy female figure in a very revealing outfit. But these are like realistic proportions. This could be a real woman's body, not some of that exaggerated nonsense that we've seen in a lot of the other things. And look at these great creepy monster faces. They're like, they're like baby devil things. Horrible looking little monsters, but beautiful artwork. Sorry, I'm just looking. Um, I'm looking at the black and white and like these candles. They don't have like any like light, but it's like he added it in color, I guess. That's really interesting. I just noticed that. Um, God, God damn, this guy's good. More black and white and colored versions. Red Sonia. Again, that's another character where with that super sexy, absolutely ridiculous outfit that she wears. You could be an artist that, take, that takes it to the extreme, over-sexualized kind of extreme, or you could do kind of like you see here. Look at all those skulls in the background. That's a Frazetta, I believe that was a Death Dealer is the name of that 
classic painting that kind of became a character that people were interested in. Um, no idea what that is, but it's great. Is that Boba or Mando? I don't fucking know. Who cares? Um, look at this great looking hand. Like, I wonder if he just took and flexed his own hand and got lighting set up and then referenced for it. I mean, it would make perfect sense. That's what you do. That's what you're supposed to do as an artist. This Doctor Strange Spider-Man. I have no idea what's going on there, but it looks really cool. All of this stuff is just... You can just see, this is a guy that just went off and learned to draw, and he takes the art form seriously. He takes his skill sets seriously. He wants to make this shit look good. He had he had it in his head to go out and learn how to draw and become an artist, not just a copy of Liefeld. And he might be the best artist to come out of Image Comics ever. I mean, he's got to be in the running for the top three best artists to grow out of that uh, Image Comics experiment that's still going on to this day. Great Wolverine riding a dinosaur. Venom. That's just, I love it. Let, look at that face. It's so perfect. It's such a beautiful face. That eyes, nose, and mouth, the soft finesse to it, the, the waves of the hair. I mean, really, man, that face, I'm just enamored with it. And like the little subtle coloring of like the freckles on her. Absolutely beautiful. And then the backgrounds, the plants and everything, the trees and the branches, how everything moves around and the composition of it, how it kind of frames her. So great. And then some sequential pages. Like he doesn't just draw pinups. He, this guy draws comic art. He can draw sequential storytelling. This stuff is all so good. So good. How many of those old Image Comics guys, like the, the second wave of young guys they hired on, could draw this? I mean, he couldn't draw this at the time. He had to go learn, so that's fair. Just more of the same of just great, beautiful work. I'm... Oh, uh, yeah, right. He can do caricatures. Um, I don't know. I can't remember the name. I know some of you watching will know. Is an artist I'd see draw like Mad Magazine all the time and do like these exaggerated caricature faces of people that this is what he reminds me of. I can't think of that artist's name, but that is a skill set I do not have and I don't understand how people can do it. It makes sense when you look at it, but... To get the gestures and the lines, everything correctly to make it look like someone that you know, an actor, you know, Travolta, Sam Elliott, Kirk Douglas, another great Red Sonia, a horse. He knows actually how to draw animals. Another great Sonia cover. Some of these, you know, I don't know who they are, but the artwork is just fantastic. Red Skull. That's great. Look at that. Look at that awesome logo. And this, whatever this lizard creature he's got as a pet. That Spider-Man Noir. That's really cool. Love this black and white. Valkyrie. It's so good. And so much life um, in these backgrounds. To be able to, it's all the little details. Like, the umbrellas and the people sitting and the windows and the reflections and the 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 signs, the turtles up there, the the railings, the bricks. There's so much life to it. It's so good. Electra He-Man. You know I love that. You know I'm doing a He-Man fan comic. I've been doing it forever. And man, that Skeletor face looks amazing. Everything looks great. Flash Gordon, the coloring, how it's like cool colors here and then this highlight of that warm color. Heavy metal, we all know that girl from that, from the, at least the animated bit, the Rat Pack there. Look at this. That's so great. It's so fantastic. Sandman. I've never read any Sandman comics or any of the Vertigo stuff like this. It's one of those things I really need to get caught up on. And But um, even without knowing the context, this stuff looks so great.
And even things like old classic like comic strips, Hagar the Horrible. How many of you guys know what that is? Is that still running? Is that even, I remember reading that as a kid. I'd read it every goddamn day, every week. And I never thought it was funny. It was never funny, but I sure read it every damn time. Some great Thor uh, images. Look at this intensity on his face and the hammer coming forward and this great muscular arm. So great. And that classic old Thor logo. Beautiful, beautiful. Conan. Conan the Barbarian. Um, so good. The Schwarzenegger version. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, and I'm not saying this is a negative. Like, he light boxed this to get the proportions right, and then he threw in his own. Like, you can't light box this line work. That's him throwing in his finishing flair on that to make it look good, and it does. But it really looks like Schwarzenegger. I wonder if he does some of if he does some kind of um, any kind of photo tracing on occasion. More Conan stuff. He did a Conan series. I remember picking up a couple issues of that. That was really good. Love this classic Frankenstein. Great. Betty Page, super sexy. That face. God, that looks like a friend of mine. That face of hers right there, that eyes, nose, and mouth. I'm going to have to point that out to her. I think that looks just like her, actually. Anyway, sorry, random little thought my mind was going off on there. Hor Loki and some weird animal horse thing. The Hellfire Club. Look at this great wolverine and a bear on the jungle sitting setting. Another great wolverine shot. Love me some wolverine. He's my favorite character. Um, kind of the past version of him. I mean, they've kind of done some things to him in modern days that I don't particularly care about, care for, but God damn, look at that. Look at the anatomy on that. The arms and the muscles and everything. Throwing that logo behind it. So damn good. Man, Moon Knight is a character I do not give a shit about, but you can draw some interesting imagery with him, just like he did here. Namor, great. Uh, got Jack Kirby. It uh, looks like he took a uh, old Kirby drawing. Let me get this up closer, a pencil drawing. And then he inked it up himself to kind of give it his own flair. That's neat. That's a really fun exercise because Kirby leaves it open for a lot of interpretation. You could follow his lines exactly, specifically, correctly. But it's more interesting to throw in some, like, your own kind of stylings on top of it. That's really cool. Really cool. Great Daredevil. <laughs> it looks so good. It's been a minute since I've looked through this. Like I picked, I got it in the mail. I flipped it open. I looked through it, through it like twice in one day, and then I sat it down. And I haven't looked through it again in the entire the several weeks since I got it because I wanted to save it for uh, doing this video. Love this image. I thought this was really cool. You know, Daredevil. And you got them walking this low angle with like rain falling, but in the reflection, it's like ninjas are there in the reflection, or they're like invisible. They can't see them. I I don't know. All I know is it looks really neat. So well done. Look at those wild colors going on. Now look, he's just drawing. Like, this is a guy who's like, I'm an artist. I don't just draw muscly dudes and hot girls. I'm like, he's putting in the effort to draw everything else. I mean... It was like, uh, it says here, you know, Canary. Canary is a Western horror series created by Scott Snyder and I for comicsology that will eventually be collected and published by Dark Horse Comics. A series like this really taps into a genre I love but rarely get to play around with. I had so much fun drawing this series and tried a lot of new techniques and layouts that it looks like we'll be creating an artist edition in black and white that will feature full-size pages and additional never-before-seen never designs. I can't wait for that. I've never heard of this, but look at him. Going all in to learn how to draw things like dead trees, chickens, cowboy hats and boots, stump and axes and outhouse, animals, guns, snakes, wagons, more animals. Like you have to learn how to draw this shit. And I say that to myself. I need to take more time just to learn how to draw things. The Warriors 3, that's great. Classic Nick Fury. That's really cool. I love the old spy 60s era kind of vibe. Punisher. Look at that intense look on his face. I love that. That's really neat. Sh 
Sheena, Queen of the Jungle. Ah, see, there's Prophet. All those images I was showing you before, that was the character he was drawing, Prophet. And then this is a new image that he's done recently. Look at the, like, how different it is. I know I've already said that before, but that is the same character that we were looking at at the very beginning of the video. And um, man, is he just a thousand times better than he ever was. Love this. Vampirella was a wolfman and like a vampire. It's Dracula. I don't know. Batman. Look at the architecture on this drawing. The gargoyles, the bats, the, the buildings and all these parts to it. Man, you got to like find reference for that so you know what it looks like. So you know how to draw and then you got to know how to do it in perspective. And then you got to do the composition. All that before you get to draw Batman. Holy shit, these are good. I think I really like this one the best. The way, like, the dark background is kind of highlighted around his head. So fantastic. Gosh, classic Superman, like, the Christopher Reeve and the three evil Kryptonians. Great. Iron Fist. That's great. I love. I like that one a lot. This right here, this Catwoman. It's not a great design. I like that specific costume. It's not my favorite at all, but he makes it look good. Just all of this stuff. He's so damn good. Frank Frazetta's Dawn Attack. That's a. That's a sexy girl. If you've ever seen one, jeez. Great stuff. Look at that old classic, like silly kind of. Old timey ray gun. Looks great. Oh yeah, Iron Man. I think this villain is boomerang. Guy that throws boomerangs. <laughs> kind of a dumb concept, but man, he really sells it right there. Conan again. So anyway. And there he is. That's the artist himself. He is he has earned the label that I like to apply to my favorite guys as bad motherfuckers. What a great book. I am so glad I picked that up. And um, I highly recommend you get your hand on a copy if you can. If you love to look at great art by a great, incredible guy who's grown and just excelled over the years and become an artist because he takes the craft so deadly seriously. And um, I mean, seriously, can you think of anybody that's shown that much change who's that different from the way he was then? Like if you look at Liefeld... And his work in the 90s then, and you look at his work now, there's not much change. If you look at Jim Lee's work from that era, the era then and, that, and, and what he does now, there's not much change. And, you know, if you like their work back in the day then and they completely change into something else now, then I can see that not being a positive. You like the way they draw and you want them to keep drawing the way that you like them to draw. But he didn't draw very well, but man, he grew into first-rate, exceptional artist, and he deserves more recognition, and I hope that he has all kinds of success, and um, can't wait to see more work from him. So that is all I have for now, so thank you for watching. I appreciate it very much, and I will see you next time.